Okay, in this video, I want to talk about sample rates, and we're going to distinguish between sample rates and the number of samples, and we're also going to talk about how to optimize your sample rate if you're using a lab scope or a data logger. Now, the very basic definition of sampling is simply measuring and recording a data point. So as an example, let's imagine that I wanted to record the ambient temperature in my backyard every hour on the hour for a full day. Let's say that I hired you to sit on a chair and to look at a thermometer and every hour to write down the temperature that that thermometer read. And do that for 24 hours. So beginning at 12 a.m. you'd record the temperature, let's say at 65 degrees, at 1 a.m., at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m., and so on throughout the entire day until 11 p.m record the temperature every hour on the hour. Now at the end of the day we can take those temperature measurements and we can plot them on a graph like this. On the left side we could have degrees Fahrenheit and on the right side we could have time and we could plot each of those data points throughout the day and then we could draw a line to connect those data points and we'd basically have a chart of what we measured. But right away we could ask two questions. We could say what is the number of samples and what is the sample rate? Both of those are easy questions to answer. The number of samples would be simply be 24. We had one sample for every hour of the day, so we had 24 samples. Now the sample rate takes into account time, so we're asking how many samples per unit of time. In this case, we had one sample every hour, so our sample rate was one sample per hour. Now there are a couple of problems with the way we're collecting this data. First of all, do we have enough data that I could determine whether global warming is happening or not? Absolutely not. There would be no way to answer a question like that with this limited number of samples. What we need are a lot more samples collected over a much larger period of time, perhaps over years or decades, and maybe in multiple locations. The other question I would ask is, what can I learn from this data I've collected? And the answer is really not much. The only things I can really tell you from this data is what the high and the low and average temperatures were for that one single day. So if we look at this and we say, well, here's our low temperature. Maybe that happened at 5 a.m. And our high temperature, maybe that happened at 3 p.m. With this data, how certain are we that we actually did record the highest and lowest temperatures of the day? And the answer to that is probably not very certain. I might have recorded 58 degrees at 5 a.m. and 88 degrees at 3 p.m. But it's very possible that the highest temperature actually occurred at 245. It's just that we didn't record the temperature at 245, and so we missed that data point. So what we need is not just more samples, but a higher sample rate. If you were to sample the temperature twice an hour, you would get more accurate data. If we were to sample the temperature every minute of the day, we'd get even more accurate data. Now, at the end of the day, we would have so many notebook pages filled up that we wouldn't know what to do with all this data. It would be really hard to sort through it all and to find our minimum and maximum temperatures and to identify any trends in the data. And because we need more samples and we need a higher sample rate, and we need to be able to analyze the data later, we use computers. We don't send people out with notebooks and pencils. We use lab scopes and data loggers and scan tools to sample our data for us. Now, even your multimeter samples. So a multimeter might sample at 100 samples per second, for example, which is a pretty fast rate. But the number that you see on the screen over here is simply an average of all of these samples. Now if I hit the min-max button, I start recording, this might sample at a thousand samples per second, which is the same as saying one kilosample per second, and some meters that have a peak min-max function might even sample at about four thousand samples per second, or four kilosamples per second. And then the meter is capable of delivering our minimum and our maximum and our average readings during that time period. Now the real reason that we're talking about sample rates here is because we're going to be using lab scopes and data loggers. So I've opened up my PicoScope software here and I'm in demo mode, so I'm not connected to an actual device, but I'm getting a demo waveform here. And I want you to look up here at this number. So it's not 100,000 times per second, it's 100,000 times on this screen. So if I want to find out what my sample rate is, I simply need to divide this number by the number of seconds across the screen. And in this case, it's 50 milliseconds. In order to make this easier to understand, let's change the time base to 200 milliseconds per division, which will give me two seconds across the screen. So now I have 100,000 samples on the screen divided over two seconds, so my sample rate is 50,000 samples per second. Now if you want to be able to view this, come up here to Views and click on View Properties, and it will open up this window over here on the right that shows us both our number of samples 
and our sample rate. Now something that you should be aware of is that if I have two channels turned on like I do now, the number of samples or the sample rate has to be divided between the two channels. So what the scope does is it first samples the voltage on channel A and then it samples the voltage on channel B and then back to channel A and so it alternates between the two but half of the samples belong to each channel. It's 25 kilo samples per second per channel. Now this is a great time to point out that scan tools sample the exact same way. If I'm viewing or logging a certain number of PIDs using a scan tool, that sample rate has to be spread out over all those PIDs. In this case, I have six PIDs that were logged, and so it sampled the first PID, which was vehicle speed, before moving on to the mass airflow rate and then the O2 sensor and so on, and it sampled each of those six PIDs before returning back to vehicle speed again. Now if I look at my time over here, my one second occurred right here. So if I highlight all of these cells, I can look down here at my cell count and it looks like I had approximately 126 PIDs per second as my sample rate. But each individual PID was only sampled about 20 times during that second. Now one of the things that I've taught in other videos is that when you're setting up your lab scope to capture a waveform, that in general you should always request the highest number of samples possible. So you would turn this all the way up. And that's because when you zoom into your waveform, if you have more samples, you'll have more clarity and more definition, and you'll be able to see more detail in your waveform. Now, there are times when you wouldn't want to do that. For example, if I'm planning to export my data from the scope into a CSV file to open up in Microsoft Excel, for example, if I'm sampling at 100,000 times a second, that's going to give me 100,000 lines for every second that I've recorded. And in some situations, that can be more than the, the software can handle. So if you're not planning to export it, turn this up. And I'm going to try to show you why by showing you what it looks like when you have a lower and higher sample rate. So if I stop this recording and I zoom in on one of these waveforms, you'll see that I have quite a bit of definition, but you'll also see these straight lines. These straight lines are the lines that connect the dots that this lab scope drew when it sampled. So it created samples, plotted them on this chart, and then drew lines between them. So if I want more or less definition, I can change the sample rate. So first, let's see what this would look like if I had a lower sample rate. I'm going to reduce this so that I'm only requesting 20,000 samples in this two-second waveform. And as I zoom in, you'll see the lines that used to be straight up and down are now angled, and there are bigger spaces between the dots. There's a lot less definition, and even the shape of this waveform has changed so it's not as clear as it used to be. So now let's do the same thing with a higher sample rate. Let's request 1 million samples on this screen this time. We have a lot more samples that these lines are able to connect so we can see all the details in the waveform. The higher the sample rate is, the more I can zoom in and see tiny details even inside of here. If I had a high enough sample rate, I could even zoom into a small area like this, and I would have more clarity than I do here. I'm now zoomed in about 26,000 times, and I can see the lines that are connecting the individual samples on the screen. I want you to be able to recognize a waveform that was taken with too few samples, because that's one of the most common mistakes people make when they're capturing waveforms. You'll see the straight lines, the sharp angles. That means we don't have enough samples for the clarity I'm looking for when I'm zoomed into this level. I want to show you a couple of other examples. This is a digital signal that was recorded. Let's zoom in and take a look at this. You can see this doesn't look digital at all. It doesn't have a square pattern to it, though it should have. But because we sampled at such a low rate, it started to have these triangle shapes to it instead of a square shape. This is a similar waveform. And you'll see the same thing. Instead of a square, you see these sharp angles. So in a case like this, if we had just requested an increased number of samples, we would have gotten a much clearer waveform that more accurately depicted this signal. Okay, now a couple of other things that we need to understand are that just because we request a lot of samples on our screen does not mean we'll get what we request. So I can turn this all the way up to 2 giga samples. And that's what I'll request, but I'm going to be limited by the speed and the memory of my lab scope. My lab scope has certain physical limitations to it. Even though I've requested two giga samples, it's only providing me 10 million samples. That's the most that I can get in this situation. Now that maximum number will vary depending on which lab scope you have. Some picoscopes and lab scopes have a much higher memory than others do, 
and that means that we can collect more samples. Now the other thing you need to remember is that there are ways to get a higher sample rate. We can't necessarily collect more samples than the scope is capable of collecting, but we can increase the rate. If we request the highest number of samples possible, and when we zoom in our picture still is not clear enough for us, there are some things that we can do that will increase the resolution of our image. So first, and probably one of the most obvious things that we can do to increase our sample rate, is to change the time base. As you can see right now, the way I've got this scope set up, I've requested two giga samples. It's actually giving me 20 million samples, and dividing that across two seconds is 10 million samples per second. Now if I had decided I wanted to record for a total of 50 seconds, which would be five seconds per division, you notice that I still have that 50 million samples, but now the samples have to be divided over 50 seconds, so I end up with only 1 million samples per second. Or if I choose 50 seconds per division, now it takes 50 seconds to go across each of these, and I'm recording for a total of 500 seconds to see that I'm only getting 100 kilosamples per second. Now, so if I wanted to really increase my sample rate, I would choose a much lower time base. The lower I go here, the less time I have to spread the number of samples over and I get a higher sample rate. Another thing that we can do is rather than recording on two channels, I can choose to turn off the channel that I'm not using. When I turn that channel off, that allows me to have all of the samples on channel A. Now finally, one more thing that I can do that can help with my sample rate is this scope has a certain amount of memory and it's always reserving part of that memory for the very next waveform. So if I come down here to trigger and choose single trigger, and I put this trigger out here, as soon as this voltage rises past this trigger point, it will begin recording my waveform, and it will automatically stop at the end of the screen. Now it also signals to the scope that I'm only going to be recording one single waveform, so it can reserve all of its memory for the single waveform. That also will increase the sample rate that you can obtain. Those are just a few tricks that you can do to make sure that you get the highest sample rate possible, meaning the clearest image possible later when you zoom in. Now just for fun, I wanted to show you this waveform. This waveform was taken as we requested a very high sample rate, but it was recorded over 50 seconds, so it was over a large time base. But you'll notice when we zoom in, even though it was recorded over a long period of time, because we requested a high number of samples, but I still have a fairly clear waveform. I've zoomed in over 2,500 times and I can still see quite a bit of the detail here. This CANBUS waveform, on the other hand, was recorded over a time base of only half of a second, so this entire waveform only lasted half a second. But the CANBUS happens very quickly, and because we did that, we can zoom in. We can see that we still have a very, very clear picture. In fact, I'm now zoomed in more than 8,000 times and things still look very clear. I can zoom in even more, and now I'm zoomed in almost 7 million times, and now I'm just beginning to be able to see the lines that connect the dots here. So that shows how much definition I can get if I request a high number of samples and record over a small amount of time. We're always trying to strike a balance between getting the right sample rate and having the right amount of time across the screen on the waveform. And really it all depends on how much detail we're going to need later when we analyze the waveform. I hope this little tutorial has helped you to understand samples and sample rate and also learn a few tricks to be able to get the highest sample rate possible so that you can capture the information that you want in your waveforms and data logs.